Good evening, everybody. This beautiful, beautiful May day. Good Praise evening. God. It's just so lovely outside. I just, weather is just very, very inviting yes. and encouraging. Yes. Amen. Encouraging. So I just want to welcome everybody that is uh, signing on now. And I also want to welcome those who are viewing us on the replay. Uh, praise God. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, just uh, just excited to be sharing the word on today. So excited. Um, um, just want to make sure that we uh, just give God the glory and the yes. praise. Who do we have with us on today? If you're online, say hello to me. Say something. Hey. Uh, let me know that you're here. <laughs> It makes me feel good just to see the acknowledgments and see your face getting on the screen. Yes, um, so yes. please, just, just, uh, all right. I see New Harvest, Sister Nikki. Good evening, good evening. Hey, Praise God. Good evening. Who else do we have here? Hey, man, let me see. Um, Ryan, good evening, good oh, evening. Hello. Good evening. Pastor Kelly. I gave my new nickname is PDK. <laughs> PDK, that's it. That's his new initials right there. Yes. And PCB. That's hers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got in there. Sister Kelly, we just want to thank because Sister Kelly, put your hands together. She is yes. behind the scenes. She's our producer on tonight, and we're just so excited to have thank her there. You. Thank you. Uh, we got uh, who else we got here on the screen today? I think we got uh, Sister Jackie. Hey, hello, Sister hello. Jackie. hello, hello. Hello, <laughs> Yeah, Sharice. <laughs> PCB. <laughs> I hope that don't mean anything else, you know. We just, we just, I just hope that's a holy, holy name, holy, holy acronym there for you. Praise God, uh, Zenora. Yeah, Sister Kelly. All right, all right. Well, praise God. I'm excited, excited here on today. If you haven't got a chance, please, please do share, um, share this broadcast on today, as you guys have faithfully, faithfully supported. I just really yeah. want to appreciate you and the doing that so let me make yes. sure i'm doing it praise god all right i'm trying to get it together y'all yeah i think i see a few more people on all right who do we got who we got all right minister regina, regina yes minister regina on tonight yes <laughs> Brother Mike, good evening. Good evening, Brother Mike. Yes, praise God. I'm trying to get my sharing. I'm going to let Pastor Tina talk for a moment while I try to get mine together. All right. We had a couple other people I think I might have missed coming on. Yes. Okay, Brother Mike. Good evening. All right. We're going to get started in just a bit. Uh, I found this shirt. Okay, I found this shirt. I was I was out of town and I saw it uh, in Macy's. On you know, I saw it in Macy's and I thought, man, probably doesn't, nobody wants this shirt but me. You know, and so I, I look on there and you guys see it, Saratoga. So you know what it means. You know what it means. Come on, the op. Type it in there. I just I said, I praise God. It's just uh, it was just a blessing just to see the shirt. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna grab that shirt. And I'm gonna wear it on a Wednesday hey, night. Hey, Shantina. Yeah, it's good, good to, to see, see you tonight. Okay, let me go ahead and share. Well, you have a few people that know what Sarah told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise God. I, I just. <laughs> She said, what's the second word? <laughs> well, the second word is wilderness. So I'm trying to hide that part. I'm not trying to speak ill of, of Saratoga. It says Saratoga yes. Wilderness, New York. So apparently there's a Saratoga uh, Wilderness in New York State. So, um, yes, OP, Mir the, uh, the memories, praise God. So we're just excited. Yes. Great, um, memories. great memories. Great memories, great time. So I. All right, it's Pastor it. Lakia. Yes, yes. Good to see you. 
Yes, home base, home base. Yes, you know, I was just thinking about it on today. We spent eight and a half years, eight and a half years. Come on, can you put your hands together? That was a blessing. And we know that eight is that time for a new beginning. So God has already orchestrated this yeah. ministry. He's already put his hand upon it. And we just thank God for him. Praise yeah, God. Yeah, there were times, if, <laughs> especially if you had to mow the lawn. Praise God. If you had to mow that lawn, sometimes it raised to higher heights where it felt like the wilderness. So uh, definitely, I mean, good, good times, good funny times, times crazy yeah. times, all those things. And so we just... Um, we're just glad to be here on the Van Buren, praise God, and be here also online. So that's a new Amen. move for us as well. Yes, virtually. So I'm going to have a startup, Pastor. You got anything you want to say on today uh, well, before we're we get just, started? Um, hello, Mary. We want us to um, stay in prayer for the Gibson family. Yes. We are praying um, for mom and daughter, lifting them up in prayer. Uh, they have uh, made funeral arrangements and um, the home going celebration will be on this Monday Monday yes. at 10 a.m. for visitation hour, 11 o'clock for uh, the service, and it will be at Baxter's funeral home. So um, you may come and, you know, show your love, show your support. I believe the family um, would appreciate anything that you would do during this time of grief, but we will continue to pray that God will strengthen the family. Amen. Amen. So yes. while you're at it, can you just lead us in prayer before we start today? And then we'll get into the study yes. for today. All right. <laughs> Father God, we thank you, oh God, for this day, God. Oh God, we thank you that you have given us yes. a beautiful warm day, God. And God, we are so gracious of your hand just being up on us, God. We thank you, God, for bringing us together one more time that we may glorify your name, that we yes. may lift you up, that we may give you the praise, God, for we your people. We will praise you with the fruit of our lips. We will praise you with our heart, God, with the prettiness of our heart, God. We will say thank you, hallelujah, for another day. Thank you, God, for another opportunity. Amen. Amen to come together and to learn of you, God. God, we pray in Jesus' name that your word will begin to manifest even as we're online, God, that you would touch hearts on today, that you would touch bodies, God, touch the minds of the people, God, that we may think and focus only on you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you and we thank you, God, for the word that you are getting ready to release in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I don't know if you mind if you give me some water. Yeah. <laughs> got some water on today. <clears throat> oh, praise God. Well, listen, I want to get in. I want to talk about um, um, my title on today. What I want to talk about is fulfilling, fulfilling. I know there's one word, but I want to break it up to the full feel. You know, you know, if any of you eaten too much, you, you know how you have completely full and you can't eat another bite. Um, you are stuffed, as they would say. Um, I, I think uh, I just want to get into that point to where we are full. We are full and, and, and beyond full to where we're overflowing. Amen. And so I just want to get into uh, what it's like to be empty and what it's like to be full and what that means, what it means to us, even in our Christian walk, as we begin to move uh, after the Lord and to seek after his face. Yeah, if you could write that in for me, fulfilling, fulfilling. If you can add that in, I appreciate it. Um, just continue to stay interactive with me. I love it. Um, but it's fulfilling, fulfilling. And I, and I was just looking at this and very excited about it. And uh, before I get into it, I got a verse that, that I always remember a long time ago. And I just want to uh, just touch on it a bit. It, it doesn't seem like it fits, but just watch. Um, and listen, Proverbs 30, verse 15 says there are three things that are never satisfied, never satisfied. No, four things that never say enough, meaning they never will say I cannot have more. They will never say stop. They will always say, give me more. Amen. That right there should really excite you as a believer, because if we can get to that point where say, Lord, you know, I'll take more. I'm, I'll take more. Uh, Peter said it this way. When Jesus says, if I can't wash your feet, then you can't have any part of me. And Jesus, uh, Peter says, listen, do uh, 
Watch all of me then. Watch all of me. You know, he says, I want it all. Praise God. Can you type that in? I want it all. I want every word he has for me. I want every promise he has for me. I want every embrace he has for me. I want um, every lesson that he has for me to learn. I want it all. I want it all. Praise God. I want it all. Praise God. I don't want to stop. I don't want to cut God off. I don't want to say that I'm one thing when really God's saying I got more for you. Praise God. I don't want to lock myself into a place to where I have limited myself or I said I am full. I, I don't want to be at that full feeling. I want to be overflow. I want the feeling for it. So it's the overflow. I want to not be satisfied where I'm at. Praise God. How many like that? Praise God. Even if you look at your bank account, I'm sure most of us were not turned down another dollar to our account. Uh, it just depends on where it came from. But if it came from anything lawful or anything that was good or clear, we would accept it in. Amen. We accept it in. So we continue to take it more and more and more and more. Give it to me. Come on, say, Lord, I receive it right now in the name of Jesus, because he is the God that is that that is uh, Lord over our cattle on a thousand hills because all the silver is his, all the gold is his, everything belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, praise God. So everything is his. And so and when he begins to pour out, he is the God of more than enough. He is the justy one. He is the, he is the one, he is the provider, praise God. Jehovah Jireh, he is the one that, that brings that out and puts it into place to where we have enough. And never, never will we be able to say that God did not have for us all the things that we need. If we are in his will, if we are in his way, we will find out that God has blessed us exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Somebody say, ma'am, somebody put exceedingly. Praise God. That's not what the verse says, but we say it like that. Exceeding, exceeding the abundance, exceeding the abundance, uh, beyond the abundance, past the abundance. Praise God. Some of us want abundance, but God says, I want to give you more than the abundance. OK, so here's the four things. Proverbs uh, um, verse 16, it says the grave, the barren womb, the thirsty dever, desert and the blazing fire. The grave, the barren womb, the thirsty desert, and the and the ba blazing fire. So let's go through them one at a time. Praise God. I want to talk about the grave. See, there are competing factors for you to feel. And there are competing things. Like, like as God wants to feel you, there's also the world that wants to fill you and the devil wants to fill you. So there are competing factors. So we are here, this vessel, this vessel that is open. This vessel that is empty, this vessel is ready to be poured into. But sometimes because of our position, we get the wrong thing in. And, and sometimes the, 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 uh, the, the proverb comes forth and he first mentions the grave because the grave never says stop. The grave has been built to take on the dead. And, and we got to be careful that we do not have that grave style on our cup or we're not filling th ourselves with dead things. Sometimes we'll fill ourselves with dead ideals, dead, dead communications, dead languages, uh, dead friendships, dead uh, dead end jobs. Come on. Uh, dead lifestyles. We'll start getting ourselves caught into dead places and we begin to fill ourselves with that and wonder why we're depressed, wonder why we're sad, wonder why we have, we have issues with our health because we are in dead places. We are not in those living places and it will continue to take more of your life. I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. If you fill yourself with dead things, then, then it will open itself. The Bible says that hell has enlarged itself. In, in other words, it says I, we are real, willing to take on a greater capacity. As much as you want to give us, we will take. And I want you to realize that when you get caught into talk, that, that leads you down a trail of filling your mind and filling your heart with dead things. Praise God. You should seek after the living and not the dead. Praise God. You should seek after those things and, and, and seek after life and that more abundantly. But one thing you have to understand, there is a competing factor when it comes for you, uh, comes to you getting your full feeling. You can be fulfilled with, with things of, of, of death or full things, fulfilled with things of life. Praise God. Praise God. The grave, Galatians 4 and 9. So, so now that 
So now that you know God, or should I say that God knows you, why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? Somebody say amen or somebody say there you go. There you go. Now that you are known of God, now that you claim you know him, now that you have said that I am a Christian, now that you said I'm a believer, now it's not that God does not know everybody he does, but the fact that he knows you now as a believer, you are somebody that knocks on his door. You're someone that, that goes into prayer and begin to ask him or intercede on behalf of others. You are one that now is developing some level of intimacy with the Father, praise God. And, 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 the, and the writer of Galatians, Apostle Paul, says now that you know God why go back to the things why go back to dead places why go back to those places they will suck you in and draw you in and you got to be careful because as you try to pull out it is that old world mentality it is your old life that will try to pull you back it will try to remind you or try to drop um, some some fallacies into your brain thinking that we had great times back then when in all actuality you were miserable you were hurt and that's the reason you came to God in the first place because you were suffering in those dead places but now Apostle Paul says because you have a relationship with God you can't go back come on type in and say I can't go back somebody else will be boldly and say I won't go back I won't go back amen I won't go back amen when I, when I thought about it I won't go back you ever have friends that old friends that come and knock on your door and they want to pull you back? Amen. I'm not just talking about bad things, but I'm talking about pulling you back to the thoughts of when you messed up. Pull you back into areas where you where, where you were not together, where you had mistakes, where you where you were messed up and they want to remind you of those dead places. Praise God. Yes, I said, yes, Shantina. Yes, we're hitting on them today. I want to hit them all. Praise God. Do not return to them and they'll call you and they'll try to pull you in. And, 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 and at that this particular point, you may not be strong enough in your relationship with God. And, and this is where the Galatians were. So Paul says, why go back? You should have experienced enough now at this point in your walk with Christ that, that you have refused to turn back because the blessings have been too great. The blessings are too big for me to switch the game right now. The grave, the grave says it's not enough. The next one, type this in. The barren womb, the barren womb, the barren womb, the barren womb. The womb, all these things, all these things, the grave and, and the barren womb and uh, all that I'm going to mention on today, they, ha they have purpose. Type that in, purpose, purpose, purpose. Uh, the grave's purpose is to be filled with dead things. That is his purpose. It's going to follow out his intent. It's going to prepare for it. It has been built for that purpose. The barren womb is, the womb is also built to bring forth light, to, to break forth new dreams and new visions and new language and new ideals. That all happens through the womb. Praise God. It manifests through a, an embodiment of an actual person, but it starts there in the womb, in the natural. And in the spirit, it still does the same thing. We birth out ideals. And it's just a thought. It's just something that can't be seen right away. But then it begins to develop. It begins to grow and grab nourishment and begin to have size and form to where now they can recognize that something is brewing in you. We can't tell what it is, what gender or what the face looks like or, or the exact uh, dimensions of what's being birthed out. But we know you are birthing something. So the womb has 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 purpose. And his purpose is very clear. Genesis 1 and 28 says it like this. And God blessed them. Amen. The barren womb, the barren womb is started to God bless them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth to fill the earth. The only way that they were going to do that is to, is to have 
have a full womb, praise God, to get pregnant, to begin to give birth. They were getting ready to, to grow and to expand. They were going to be fruitful. They were going to multiply. It was going to happen in that area. I want you to consider these things in the spirit. As you begin to birth things, your dreams will begin to have dreams. Amen. We don't talk about that a lot, but I love living in it. Praise God. Do you realize that that, that the man that invented the vehicle, the, the automobile, uh, Henry Ford, it, it started with a dream, but then the dream expanded. Others had dreams to add air conditioning. Others had dreams to add lights. And others had dreams to add automation. And others had dreams to put cruise control. So one dream began to birth out another dream. Somebody, you said it, Pastor Tina, it began to multiply. Praise God. As your dream is birthed out, you better believe that it, it, that there are other dreamers, there are other wombs that are waiting to, for what's to break out in you. So when it comes forth from you, then they can come alive. Praise God. The Bible said that when Mary ran up to her cousin Martha, she said that, that, that what was inside of Martha began to leap because of what was being birthed inside of Mary. Come on, somebody. Some of you got to know that as you're walking around with your pregnant self, that you're walking around with your full self, full in the spirit, that it's going to wake up your neighbor. It's going to wake up your friend. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to cause your, 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 your cousin and your family and your relatives to start feeling the change happen inside of them. Praise God. What's birthed in me, what's birthed in me is, uh, is impacting you and what's birthing in you is impacting me. All right, I'm back. I don't know what happened to my screen there. Praise God, but I'm back. The devil busy messing with me on today, but that's all right. We got back up on top of back up on today. We are ready and ready to function. It says, and uh, so let me read on. And subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. What God is doing in you is going gonna, is gonna to be world changing. Amen. For those innovative ideals, for those those dreams and those visions and what God is showing you, praise God, something very simple can transform the world. I, I like to think of post-it notes. Post-it notes is a very simple, very simple um, um, invention. Just taking paper and cutting it into small squares and then putting adhesive on one end, one third of it, or even less than a third so that it can stick somewhere. Praise God. But because of that very small invention, somebody was blessed and then somebody began to build upon that and they added different colors and then they added different sizes so that they can break things up. So God is birthing something out of you that can be expanded. It. Praise God. The next thing, the thirsty desert, the thirsty desert, the thirsty desert. That kind of speaks in itself right there. Um, the desert, no matter how much it's going to rain, it's ready for more. It's still going to be dry. Amen. Otherwise, it would cease to be a desert. Amen. As long as it's a desert, it's saying, feed me. It, it, in order for it to change, it has to be transformed to, uh, completely. In order for it to say stop, it has to be move or transform into something completely different. And if we can get to that point, so we we are that our thirst after God is that powerful or we feel that we are always in that dry place it is not a bad thing but it, it, it is something that draws you to the water amen if i am in a, in a very wet place i may not go after water as much but because i'm in a dry place my body will call on the water or in the fluids it will continue to speak it will continue to call come on i feel i feel that in my spirit it will continue to call out for more of his spirit fulfill me again and again and again, praise God. Some of you need to find a dry place just so that God can, can drown you or so that he can pour into you because sometimes we are too close to, to, the, to the faucet. We are too close and we're getting wet all the time and we've forgotten how to appreciate it. So sometimes God will take us to some dry places so we can develop some thirst again. So we can know what it feels like for your mouth to dry. So you know what it feels like for your body to be in anguish or, or, or to be 
be in distress until you ha are panting or chasing after or stopping whatever you're doing in your day to fulfill that thirst. Yes, I was going to use that one, Mary. You better preach out of your, out of your, um, that Jesus says, if you believe in me, as the scripture says, out of your belly, water will flow from the inside. A lot of times we're looking for it to happen around us. We're looking for somebody to preach it to us. We're looking for somebody to teach us about it. But God says, if you really do, if you believe in me, as the scripture says, I will cause water just to start springing out of you. Ah, that you will become a source. Praise God. Isaiah 58 and 11. And the Lord and the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places. I want you to catch this because sometimes we are taught by the world that if we're in a dry place, we cannot survive. But but this is about the fast. Isaiah 58 is talking about, is this not the fast that I have chosen? And then he goes on to speak that, that if you are Fasting, if you are still chasing after God, one of the benefits of the fast is here in the 11 verses, the Lord will continue to guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give you strength give strength to your bones praise god the foundation of what you are that's what the bones are praise god you don't see them but you know that they exist you can kind of see them through your skin you can see the shape and the frame of your bone but 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 really it's the skin that you see but it is the foundation without those bones i'm nothing without those bones i don't have the foundation i just become a puddle of, of, of just flesh without any support. I can't walk. I can't lift. I can't move. He says, I will strengthen those bones so that you will be able to walk and you will be able to move. You will be able to do those things and you will be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Hallelujah. And the Lord will continually guide you. That's how it starts out. And the Lord will continually, continually guide you and satisfy your desire. That's from the thirsty place, amen, praise God. I'm almost, I'm getting close to the end. Y'all know it, praise God, amen. The blazing fire, this is my favorite part right here. The blazing fire, the blazing fire, praise God. I don't, I don't know about you, but most boys when we're kids and you growing up in the era that I grew up, we like to set some things on fire. Amen. We did. We are uh, anything that we can catch. I mean, we try to keep it safe, but we try to catch it on fire. And one thing about a fire, it will continue to work. It will continue to say, this is not enough as long as you feed it. It's not going to say not another log. It's not going to say, don't give me no more. I I'm done. No, it will continue to burn what is burnable. It will continue to, to begin to, to, to consume that thing that has been set on top of it. Praise God. It will continue to, to take it out of its, its state, whatever its state is, uh, and, and begin to break it down to where it is nothing but ash. Praise God. So so the fire is amazing. And, and not just that, if the fire has the ability to jump from one spot to the other spot, it will take that opportunity so that it can continue. Are you hearing me, somebody? It, 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 these are, this is the one thing. Thing that, that I really want you to grab hold to it because in Acts, uh, in Acts it says that tongues of fire sat upon them and, and God took them and had embers and they began to break forth and now this fire has spread. Praise God. It has spread for over 2,000 years and it's touched in countries. It touched up in the hill area. It touched down in, into the jungles. It's touched even to the coldest part of the earth. It is a consuming fire. Yes, he, my God is a consuming fire and he's put us and made us as consuming fire. Praise God. He began to cause us to move and, and move in that area. Praise God. But I, this is what I like. I, I, I was looking at this and the Lord showed me the scripture and I got excited because I looked at it a different way uh, in the past. Jeremiah 20 and 9 says, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more of his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, praise God. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not hold back. 
Praise God. Now, I used to think of this scripture like we, we kind of grew up in this scripture. This is what made we feel that people were shouting and dancing and just uh, just running around at the church. Praise God. And I believe in that. So don't get me twisted. I'm not that. And, and they will always say it was just like fire shut up in my bone. And it looked like that. But that's not what Jeremiah was saying. If you look at the first part, he says, then I said, I will not make mention. Someone, I, I feel like preaching to somebody on today. This, this is Jeremiah saying in the 20th chapter, he says, if I even thought about quitting, if I thought about giving up, if I thought about stopping, they said, and, and I said I was not going to speak his anymore his name or I wasn't going to mention his word anymore. He says, but his word was in my heart. Come on, if you're going to get his word anywhere, get it in your heart. Praise God. How do you get it in your heart? You have to develop a taste for it. You have to de develop a desire for it. You got to know that his word is good. You got to know that God is good and his mercy endure forever. Praise God. You have to learn how to, to just chase after it and be excited about it and begin to feast on his word until you have developed an appetite. And, and Jeremiah said, even when I thought about giving up, I saw you, Elder Crittenden, even when I thought about it, Sister Sheila, even when I thought about giving up. It, it was like fire that was shut up in my bones. Praise God. Come on. I like it. This is what the Amplified said, and then I'm going to stop. Praise God. The Amplified says it like this. If I say I will not remember him or speak his name anymore, then my heart becomes a burning fire shut up in my bones. And, and the last section of it says it like this. It says, and I, and I am and I am weary of enduring and holding it. I cannot endure it nor contain it any longer. Praise God. I cannot endure it or obtain it any longer. Let me put that in here. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I cannot endure it or take it anymore. Praise God. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? He says, he says, he says, I can't. I, I can't hold it anymore. Praise why. If we can get our relationship with God in such a tight place to where can't nobody talk me out of it, can't nobody stop me, I know too much, praise God, even if I try to convince myself, even if I try to say, listen, I'm retiring, I'm putting, hanging my hat up, I, I, I have this in my heart. Do you understand it? It doesn't matter what anybody says around me, I have it in my heart. It doesn't matter if all the walls fall down. It doesn't matter if, if everything just goes away. It, it, it have it in my heart and as long as it's there I am weary of enduring and holding it in. I cannot hold it in. Do you hear me? It means that that I am going to be preaching to somebody. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm going to open up my mouth and tell his glory to someone. I, I cannot contain his goodness. I, I, I try to. Listen, some of you may not be at this level. This is the prophetic level. This is Jeremiah. He's a weeping priest, the prophet. And he started as a little boy. God began to speak to him. He said, Listen, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. And he says he began to put something locked in on the inside that I cannot get rid of. And in order for me to get rid of it, it is like taking all the marrow out of every piece of bone that I have in this body. And, and that is impossible to do. He says, but it is like fire that is shut up in there. It is trying to break its way out and consume every part of me. Praise God. And in order for me to contain that, it's for me to release it. Amen. It's all about purpose. He says, listen, I, I can't stop prophesying if I wanted to. I cannot stop doing God's will if I wanted to. I have reached a place in my life and my spiritual walk with God that I cannot hang. I cannot throw in the towel. I cannot retire. I cannot quit. I am here to the end because there's something happening that you cannot see that is pushing me places that you can see. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Praise God. It's pushing me places. It's just like fire shut up in my bones. Come on. Somebody type in, it's just like fire shut up in my bones. Amen. You can't trap God. You can't trap him on the inside. Praise God. Amen. 
I knew people who got drunk and started preaching because they had something on the inside. And then they, they, then they thought they could just hide it away or bury it away, but it came up. It's just like fire. My purpose is like fire. His will for my life is like fire on the inside. It's already been baked in. It's in my DNA. Yeah, praying until something happens. Yeah, just like fire shut up in my bones. Thank you, Mary. And I am weary of trying to hold it in. <laughs> I am weary, man. I'm worn out trying to hold it in. I am stressing. I am trying to hold what God has, but I can't do it. Praise God. The minute I think I'm walking away here, I find somebody preaching over there and it wakes up something on the inside of me. I, I, I am really worn out trying to hold what God has to me. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I see you, Minister Brian. I know you know what I'm talking about. If I decided I'm mad at God, if I decided I don't want to deal with this anymore, it is like fire. He has me and I'm and I'm happy about it. I'm glad that, that he is like that blazing fire working on the inside. Amen. Consuming me from the inside out. Amen. We like to be consumed from the outside in. But that's not how it's working. He's consuming you from the inside out. It's just like that white water that is coming out of your belly, out of the deepness of you. There's a fire burning on the deepness of you. Praise God. And, and you should be tired. I cannot, nor can I contain it any longer. I like that part. I can't hold it back any longer. I can't do it. Praise God. Amen. Some of you just said, just, I just can't hold it anymore. Have any of you got to the point where you're just talking, you're just talking to your family, your wife, your, your, your uh, cousin, your family member, your friend, and all of a sudden you can feel the presence of the Lord just break. You ain't even talking about that. You can be talking about cars or you can be talking about uh, uh, the weather or you can be talking about what to eat for lunch. And all of a sudden he began to break forth in the inside. You can feel it. Praise God. If you're not getting to that point, it's time for us to push to that point. It's time for, I remember talking to a, to an old pastor and he was, he was uh, uh, reaching about 80 and he was ministering to us and we just talking one-on-one. -on -one. And, and even as we were just talking, just plain talk and asking questions, it was like fire shut up in his bone because he began to begin to pour out. He just began to pour out and I'll never forget it as if it was yesterday. Praise God. It was about 25 years ago or longer. Um, I would know maybe 30 years ago. And he just began to pour out. He just began to pour out. He began to speak in tongues. He'd be just, and I just I, I just was amazed. And I knew I would be continuing to seek the explanation for what was happening in that moment. I was continue to call out to God, what happened to him? How did he get to, he began to remember things and begin to think about all the good things that God has done. And he could not help himself. Praise God. And, and listen, I talked about it on Sunday that, that he says, put this yoke, become this yoke, take my burden and take my yoke. And meaning that, that God does give us will, but once you surrender, praise God. He gives you your own. He gives you your own will. But once you surrender that will, if you let go of your will, if you let go of your ways and say, God, here it is. Take it. Take me and do what you need to do with me. Then he began to do some things great and marvelous in your life. Somebody shout amen. All right. Praise God. I don't know who's coming up here to sit with me. I don't know if it's Pastor Tina or Pastor Kelly. I don't know who's coming, but one of them is going to come and we're going to finish this out. Praise God. Amen. Uh, so they, they yield to each other. Maybe they both need to come. Praise God. I don't know. <laughs> amen. Amen. Just like fire. Just like fire. I'm going to have Pastor Tina and then uh, Pastor Kelly is coming right behind her. And we're going to finish up for tonight. I just want to, you know, sometimes if I miss anything, they get the revelation just like y'all do. I see, I see those comments. Keep them coming. Yes, I was uh, thinking as Pastor Lee was talking, and I believe we all have fire. We all have the fire down on, on the inside. And uh, Pastor, I thought about even, you know, we had a, a, a gas fireplace mm -hmm. and um, it stays lit. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a small blaze, you mm -hmm. know, that you know that it's there. But uh, at any second, it can go full blown. We have to just turn it. Open it up. Right? Open it up. And a lot of times our fire is lit but we need to turn it up a little bit. And yes. I believe, you know, we were talking about being fulfilled 
fulfilled. A lot of us are not being fulfilled because the fire is not blowing. You know, the fire, <laughs> amen, is on this level. And God is saying, no, I need you to turn, yeah. turn the dial up. Amen. So that you can begin to, you see, the fire has a purpose. It's, it's taking you uh, to a purpose, to a place where God wants you. You know, when we turn the fight that got the gas mm. fireplace up, you know, we can feel the heat blowing from the fire flames. Amen. So it's for a purpose. And the Lord is speaking even now that we are being um, kind of squashed because God, you know, sometimes you feel like, God, what else is there for me? I, mm. I know it's something there. I know I need to be doing something else. Know, so, and a lot there. of times we don't feel fulfilled in our uh, Christian journey, but you need to turn the dial. Amen. And you need to allow the fire to get hotter. Amen. So that it could come out of you. God is saying, I'm trying to move you out. I'm trying, hallelujah, to do something great in your life. And, and the devil is alive for those who feel that their fire has been burnt out. You're still lit. There's still a fire there. Hallelujah. And if you can take it by faith, amen. If you can believe that God, see, he talks about, he said, if I started a work in you, if I promised you, if I called you out, if I chose you to do an assignment, to do a purpose, amen, I will finish it, amen. And a lot of times we become weary along the way, but it is the fire, amen, that pushes pushes, amen, the gift out, pushes the intercessor out, pushes, come on, the praiser out, amen, and that's what God is speaking, God is doing a new thing, and I'm excited about this message, because I know, yes, Pastor Lakey, it is by faith, amen. and even now, I, I'm looking at myself like, okay, this fire, amen, it's going to get hotter, it's going to increase Amen. And I'm going to do the work of the Lord because I can't contain it. Amen. I can't contain it Amen. anymore. Amen. I tell you what, Mary is preaching on the side. I might have to get her in here. I mean, I tell you what, yes. she was, and, and that was good, Pastor Tina, but she popped this on the screen. It kind of threw me all off. Right? Jeremiah, you got to realize he started, he started wondering if he was worthy to carry the word. But yes. then he gets to the point and where he is now fully in. When I mentioned on, on Jeremiah chapter 20, now three chapters later he says he's speaking the word of god and he said is not my word like a fire saith the lord Amen. and like a hammer that breaketh all the hard things into little pieces come on, come yes. on. you got to know that that word that that prophetic word that that rhema word and even that logo word is breaking up and changing and transforming some things praise yes. god i, I, I thank you pastor tina and Amen. sister mary i didn't want to miss that praise Amen. god all right. I, I got Elder Critton. And just before you know, we both are fully vaccinated and, 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 and the state and the federal guidance from the CDC say that we can be sitting next to each other safely. Before before you worry about it, we also know our words and no daily things shall harm us. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Praise God. I just had to set that just in case. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, bless everybody. As I was sitting back listening to the word, the word just started filling me up. And I started, as he was talking about the fire, I was just, the, yes. the scripture, he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be full. Amen. And so as he was yeah, speaking, yeah. the word turned around and said, I want to feel the uh, feel full. Yeah. I want to feel full of the yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The word says that uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word to proceed out of the mouth of God. And I want to be full with the word of God. Yes. I want to be full full with that fire to purify anything and everything as we were talking about not going back that those old things are passed away that mean they are dead that we continue that all things are being new Paul said that I'm not perfect as some would call perfection but I continue to put the past behind me as we continue mm -hmm. to press forward toward the mm -hmm. mark of the calling of the most high That's so right. as I hunger and thirst after righteousness I want to be full with determination mm -hmm. I want to be full with that fire uh, Holy Ghost fire like again to purify and purge everything I want to be full of prosperity I want to be full of good health I want to be full of the word I want to be full of that living water to cleanse everything out I want to be full to so full that it just overflows not only touching me but touching Pastor Lee and touching Pastor Tina and each and every one of you out there. So continue. And the Bible tells us to first seek ye that kingdom of righteousness and, and it's righteous and all these things shall be added. You shall be full in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. That is Amen. so good. The Did more you, you have the word, it's going to be impactful. Uh, when we look at um, um, 
I believe Luke chapter four. Mm -hmm. And that's when Jesus was being confronted by Satan yes, and Satan began to challenge him in the word, mm -hmm. but he used the word falsely. He gave him a part of it, but he yes, did sir. not give him the fullness of the word. And Jesus responded by attacking back with the word. He says, he says, this is not his foot. It, 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 uh, and Jesus says, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. He began to, to, to come back with the word. And we know if we're going to battle in these days, we're going to have to know what the word of God says. It's going to have to be a flaming sword. It's going to have to be a two edged sword cutting to the bone, through the bone, to the marrow, even the hidden things, praise God. And we're going to have to learn how to speak it. It will enhance your prayer, praise God. As you're filling up, according to this word, it's going to come out and it's going to go forth. It's going to be like that burning fire or it's going to be like that, uh, it's going to be like a, a, a rivers of water flowing out of you. Amen. So it's important to get it inside of you. Amen. We're not just being a word, word church. Come on. But we're trying to, we want to be a spiritual church. I want to be a word, word church. I want to be a prophetic church. I want to be a pastolic <laughs> church. I want to be evangel uh, evangelical church. Uh, a church. I want to be a pastoral teaching church. I want to, all of those things. Amen. Do not limit us to what we can be. Praise God. Give me all of it. Amen. I, I believe that we need all of it. The Bible says for perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the church, we need it. Praise God. We taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. <laughs> Bless you, Pastor. Well, praise God. Listen, I want to thank you and them for uh, uh, joining in on me today. And I'll thank you all for joining us. And uh, um, we're ending today. I'm asking Pastor Tina to come up and finish with me. Uh, praise God. I just like her sitting next to me. Amen. Amen. I just, you know, I just like to hug her while y'all can't see my arms underneath there. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I just like to have that little space under there. So, praise <laughs> God. And so, I got her with me. And uh, we just want to thank you all for jo joining yeah. us on this night. You got anything, last th words you want to add? No. Um... I can't think of anything. Oh, we are continuing, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, that we are keeping the Gibson family uh, lifted in prayer. Um, I believe they are taking um, monetary donations. So if you go to um, our page, um, I know on our private ladies page, and I believe it's under her page, uh, Ramika Gibson. She was a wonderful servant here, uh, served here. We're going to truly miss her. Yes. And so we are definitely praying for the family. Yes. Uh, the homegoing service will be uh, Monday, on this Monday coming up at 10 o'clock for 10, 10 a.m. for uh, visiting uh, hours. Uh, and then the service will be at 11 a.m. And that is at Baxter's Funeral Home. Yeah, right so, on Dickman, right on Dickman. That's where it is. Yes. So we'll not be at the church um, just because we have conflicting. We have a preschool that's running during that time. So we um, the available time, it worked out best to have it there. So well, for those that can join us and those that can meet us out there, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'm not sure about the limit of the number, uh, but if you willing to come out and see um and i'm sure they try to make room right. for you or at least you get a chance to uh to um pay your respects um to the family yes Amen. and if you can give a donation i know that we as new harvest will be uh sowing a donation to the family so you know she has her gofundme page up uh, so definitely, if you can help, that would be a blessing to the people. Praise God. And if you're in the Battle Creek uh, area, thank you, uh, uh, our youth pastor right there, please register. Come to yeah. our service on Sundays. We are here on Sundays. Yes, yes. yes. Right, so <laughs> the space is limited, but you won't know until you register. Praise God. Yes. So register, sign up, bring the family. Um, and so, yeah, we have a senior Sunday coming up where we're going to celebrate our seniors. So we definitely want yeah. Uh, parents uh, that have those seniors that have been attending New Harvest, you know, for a long time or may have visited us even, uh, please reach out to our youth pastor, uh, Sharice Buchanan, and so we can get that information and so we can celebrate, celebrate them. them yes. Amen. Even though we have been uh, dealing with this pandemic, we still want to acknowledge our young people who have achieved uh, have, have achieved levels, higher levels in education. So we're just so excited for them and really want you to be a part so a couple things make sure you register for any service but right. most of all we, we want to be there yes. for us uh for sunday uh june 6th to celebrate our our um graduates 
Amen. Uh, also, we want to thank you, as always, for your faithful giving, giving, and we really appreciate it. It's been a blessing carrying us through um, this tough time, um, but God has been a blessing, and he's used you to be a blessing, so we just want to thank you once again. Well, that brings us to the end, and I just want to thank you on, on today. Again, I, this may be the last time y'all see my Saratoga <laughs> shirt. I don't know. I may have to pull it back out again, but this is my Saratoga shirt. Uh, just those that worked with me before, earlier when we started. How many remember back in the day, in Saratoga, the day. <laughs> right around the corner from Elder Crittenden? We were right there at Saratoga, praise yeah. God, and we were praising God, and God expanded us, and we just so, I, I couldn't here, resist. I couldn't resist <laughs> buying this shirt. So I said, man, it just sat right there, and I got it for a good price, y'all. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, so let's close in prayer. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word on today. We thank you for yeah. building our desire. We yeah. thank you, Lord, for putting inside us, for fulfilling us, Lord, with your desire. We thank you for shutting up your fire in our bones so yeah. that we cannot even stop if we tried. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are stirring those, yes. stirring those that may be watching us on the replay or watching us at a later time, and you're moving in them and carrying them to higher heights, Lord, that you're putting that desire in them, telling them their purpose, oh God. Yes. And Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your word. We yes. thank you how you continue to watch over us and your word, and we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We hope to see you Sunday. Remember, we are here. Amen. We would love to see you. All right.